Hello, Dr. Childers here. So we're in my VITA series. We're up to my time as a clinical director of an early childhood assessment and treatment center. Now, up till now, what you're seeing with my VITA is a broad base of uh, experience and learning. One of the differential diagnoses for ADHD is high-functioning autism. So while down at um, the Chalk UCI project, I worked with Dr. Filipek and the UCI project down there on autism, and we were involved over there because that's one of the differential diagnoses. We had a, a, one of my postdocs was, was down in her clinic down there for autism. And so that differential diagnosis, understanding autism, I have background in that, particularly the high-functioning autism kind of features that are uh, a differential diagnosis to ADHD. While I was out at the early childhood uh, clinic, clinical director out there, um, I continued to advance that, that knowledge base around diagnosis and treatment of all forms of early childhood kinds of stuff, because they're all differential. Sensory motor, language development, um, psychological development, attachment bonding, intersubjectivity, trauma, ADHD, um, autism. So uh, I got additional training in two diagnostic models, one by Greenberg, who's an autism, the ICD, ML, something. So I went back to uh, Virginia and a week of training in that diagnostic model. That never caught on, and so it's, it's a little pocket knowledge. It has a stronger diagnostic capacity for sensory motor problems, the Greenspan um, diagnostic model. Uh, the one that did kind of establish DC 0 to 3, the early childhood stuff. Now, the DSM system is, is really bad for kids. It's a bad system overall. It's really bad for kids. It is horrific for early childhood. It is not at all applicable. DSM is not at all applicable to early childhood. Big hammer, a reactive attachment disorder. That's pretty much it. It is it, bad. So the DC 0 to 3 came along because we need a diagnostic system for infants and two-year-olds and three-year-olds and five-year-olds. And the pathology is not so much in them, it's in the surround, although we can have neurological problems in the autism spectrum or in the you know, mental retardation, cognitive spectrum, sensory motor processing, psychological issues, attachment issues, relationship issues. And so that DC 0 to 3 captures that really well. So I got training in that as well. So I have training in two early childhood uh, diagnostic models. In addition, um, there's attachment pathology. Um, you know, there's this, this attachment theory, this bond, it's bad, uh, uh, you know, forcing. You know, that, so we're going to get rid of that attachment bonding therapy stuff they do out there. Don't, don't, that's bad. The two attachment uh, treatments for infants um, for that first two years are two of them called Watch, Wait, and Wonder and Circle of Security. The Watch, Wait, and Wonder uh, one is it's, it's just beautiful. It's for infants. You're sitting with the parent and an infant or early child, one year, something like that, and you join with the parent and you just get them to, you know, watch, wait, wait, wait and wonder. I wonder what the child's thinking. I wonder what the child's doing. Don't intervene. Don't do anything. Let's just develop a capacity for empathy to the child. And, and watch, wait, and wonder. It's a very gentle, um, interesting therapy. There's four points of entry into the parent-child relationship. Stern talks about this. Um, there's the child's thoughts and then there's the child's behavior. There's the parent's thoughts, and there's the parent's behavior. And so you can intervene on any one of those. If you intervene on the parent's behavior, you're going to change the child's representations. If you change the child's representations, that changes the child's behavior, which changes the parent's representations, which changes their behavior. And so you can intervene at any one of those points, and it's going to affect all four of those points. And so they're called ports of entry. Um, typically, it's most useful to enter on the behavior ports of entry. It's, it's most... Uh, convenient to enter on those. Entering on the representations, the thinking side is more subtle. Cognitive behavior therapy with adults, it's easier. You intervene on the behavior, the uh, dysfunctional thinking systems that will then change the behavior. Um, but for kids, for infants, we really can't intervene on the behavior stuff. We're intervening on the parents' 
representation networks, their trauma history, their internal working models, their schemas, and we're altering how those see the situation, which will change how their behavior is, which will change the beha child's behavior and child, you know, child's attachment bonding and representations and things. So ports of entry uh, for this. So those are uh, so those early childhood models and circle security another interesting one involves videotapes very cumbersome but very good you know the the uh, series of um, uh, sessions with the parent involving videotapes of the parent child interaction helping them understand attachment bonding and this is circle of security a healthy attachment the child ventures away and then comes back and checks in again then ventures away comes back and checks in again and it's a predator driven system so if there's a predator out there the child stays close the child doesn't venture away if the if the parent is secure the child feels comfortable everything's wonderful and the parents got everything handled now the child feels safe to go venture out and explore the world knowing that the parents going to watch out for the predators so healthy children secure attachment ventures away and then he begins to disorganize and dysregulate because their nervous system isn't connected to the adults. And so they come back and reconnect, restabilize their nervous system, and then venture away again, they come back. And, and so it's called the circle of security, first identified Margaret Mahler in the 1930s. Um, the uh, separation individuation and return and reproach mod um, in Mar Margaret Mahler. And so uh, the circle of security builds on that um, idea as an intervention model. So I know the two attachment uh, attachment treatments for early childhood, as well as the two diagnostic systems uh, for early childhood. And our client population that we dealt with was trauma. So kids who've been sexually abused, kids who've been physically abused, kids who've been neglected by meth parents, profound neglect, uh, some of the, wow, you know, the kids out of the, um, that have been adopted out of the Romanian, uh, orphanages, the ones that are like, wow, serious stuff, they would like be arriving at my clinic. I would get the foster parents with the kid from the Russian uh, uh, orphanage that they adopted at six months, and now this kid's two years old, and they've got all sorts of kind of weird issues um, around attachment and behavior and neglect kind of, kind of damage. And so I've seen the impact on the attachment system of trauma of um, neglect trauma, of sexual abuse trauma, and of physical trauma. And then there's domestic violence that plays into that. There's alcohol and substance abuse that plays into that. And so there's, there's a domain of child abuse pathology that's involved. And so uh, I'm well familiar with assessing that domain, with diagnosing that domain, and with treating that domain. How do you fix that? How do you fix the child's attachment system that has been damaged by physical violence? By being beaten with an electrical cord. I had one kid whose dad pushed him into the fireplace and the kid had, had burns on his back from the grating of the, the fire because the dad had thrown him into the fireplace. Burns, on cigarette burns on the hands. How do you treat a three-year-old who's been through that and is now in the foster care placement? Or five-year-old who's who's been sexually abused because her, their mom was a meth addict. And so she would have all sorts of strange people in the house doing meth. And she'd be three days on a meth binge and then crash for three days. And this kid wouldn't have food around the house. And the, and, the, and these these predatory meth addicts kind of hanging around. And one of them, they'd be high on meth and they'd sexually abuse the kid. And so I got a sexually abused, neglected kid. And a foster care recognizes, comes in, removes the kid, puts him in foster care. And then the, the foster care moves three times because the child's a behavior problem and these various, so they've had three foster care placements, a meth mom, no, and where do they go for treatment? To me. I'm the guy. Who do you send that guy to, kid to treatment with? Me. That's my clinic. And I've got a professional staff and I've got interns that I train on this, but this is me. I'm the guiding force on the treatment of that, of the treatment of sexual abuse trauma, of the treatment of physical trauma, of the treatment. And that means I have to know how the brain works. I have to know how that physical trauma damaged the brain, how the sexual abuse trauma damaged the brain. What systems are involved? Emotion regulation. Oh, there's language issues involved too here. Okay, language issues. Is it pragmatics? They're having difficulty sensory motor forming the words, or is it 
in the, the content of what they're saying. They're not able to form a linear kind of uh, thing. And it's, that's pragmatics, the other is motor. And so is it, is it a sensory motor thing? Is it a cognitive thing uh, kind of going on? Uh, and the Redland speech and language, we, we, so we get speech and language in, and we get the sensory motor people in there and doing their occupational therapy, and how does all, all integrate with the psychological attachment, and then the intersubjectivity, and then how do I teach that to therapists, work through my therapist, make sure all my clients are getting the highest possible care possible, monitor treatment plans, uh, all that. Okay, so that that's, who do these kids get sent to me? I know childhood trauma zero to five in the attachment system. Now, let me explain something about the attachment system. The attachment system is, is like the language system. They're brain systems that are already set up to acquire information. They're, they're in the brain waiting to acquire information. The language system is waiting to acquire information. Now, what kind of information, um, you know, Chinese or French or Russian, is going to be experience dependent. But the brain is what's called experience expectant. It has particular areas already set up to acquire grammar, to acquire language. The specific language is gonna depend on what it is experience dependent, but it's experience dependent. The attachment system is the same. It's experience expectant and experience dependent. It expects a relationship with the mother. It expects a relationship with the father. It expects certain relationship experiences. It's all set up, experience expectant. But what it forms is experience dependent. So what the representational networks form with the mother are dependent upon what the mother uh, provides to the child. And so it's experience expectant, experience dependent um, development of that. And so understanding how the attachment system acquires its information and organizes information and relates it into emotion regulation and behavioral regulation, cognitive processes as they're developing in the three to five year old and then how trauma comes in and damages those systems. And that period of early childhood is when the attachment system acquires its internal working models are called or its schemas for all of these patterns um, that develop. But just because the attachment system develops that, that doesn't mean that it's only relevant to early childhood. We acquire language in early childhood. Three, two to five is when the period we acquire language. But we use language throughout our lifetimes. The attachment system, we acquire the patterns, the grammar of attachment in early childhood. But we use the attachment system throughout our life. The attachment system is the brain system for love and bonding throughout the uh, lifespan. It is the software program for love and bonding. All aspects of love and bonding, including grief and loss. And so um, that attachment system, I have a, a foundational knowledge of how the attachment system works, how it dysfunctions and how to fix it developed out of early childhood mental health that equally applies to throughout the lifespan. I know how the attachment system works. I know the love and bonding system. So you get me a 12 year old with attachment pathology. Yeah, I, I know what that looks like. I know exactly what that looks like. It's, I know where it forms. I know what the patterns are. I know, I know everything about the grammar of the attachment system. So now I can look at what the kid's saying and I can tell you what type of parenting has caused that type of attachment pathology. 